Bibles. We will go to Bible study tonight. And see the ones that are here, here tonight. Hallelujah. with some colleagues this week and um, talking about kind of like what's going on in the world. You know what really hit me is to go to church but none of them know anything. All right. They have no clue of what's going on in the world. And I thought to myself, what are these pastors? And I thought to myself, a pastor is a shepherd. Amen. A pastor is a watchman. Amen. And a watchman is supposed to know what's coming into the city Amen. or what's going on. They don't know what's going on. And they're teaching folks. I'm thinking, what in the world is your pastor? Do y'all know anything about what's going on? No clue, clueless. And I thought to myself, if the blind lead the blind. I mean, think about it. The blind. Pastors clueless and blind, and they lead the congregation, they clueless and blind. Amen. I know we don't want to hear what's going on. We want to stay oblivious to what's really going on in the world. But that don't, I don't believe that's what God intended for his church. I don't, you can't convince me. And the reason why you can't convince me because Jesus gave them all the signs of the end. Amen. He told them. Matthew recorded it. Mark recorded it. Luke recorded it. Then you go to the different epistles that Paul wrote and to the book of Revelation that John wrote. They all explain what's going to be going on in the end times. And we're here but people are clueless about what's really going on. Amen. That's a dangerous place to be. Sitting up in a church and your pastor getting up talking, talking just whatever. And I'm not saying that the Bible is not big, it's not exhaustive. But if you're truly being led of God in this day, you're going to be talking about stuff that's relevant to biblical prophecy. Now, I, know I don't get up and do it every week and every Sunday or every month, every third. But the church has to be, Jesus told us to watch and pray. He didn't tell us just to go pray. He said, watch and pray. Do you see that these things that are going to come upon the earth? And it just, it just, that really bothered me. I'm like, they, they would, it's like they were looking at me. Like a deer in headlights. Y'all know they say deer. That's why you hit a deer. Because they, they get their, their eyes get fixed on the headlights and they get paralyzed and they get hit. And, you know, it, that's what it reminds me of. It's like people don't, they have no clue what's going on in this world. And do the life, be thankful Amen. that you got a pastor that's grieved by God. Because I believe, and I submit to you, if they're a real man of God and a real pastor, they're going to be talking about what's grieving God's heart. Amen. They don't get up trying to make people feel good and getting up trying to make people feel like everything's all right. Everything ain't all right. <laughs> Especially if you ain't in Christ and you ain't rooted and grounded and you don't have on the whole arm of God, everything ain't all right. It ain't no sense of me pretending that everything's all right. It's not all right. This world is going to the lake of fire fast. And uh, people are dying left and right, getting sick left and right. I'm so glad for Jesus and his word. I, 
I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 1. As we dive into this letter, this, this epistle um, to his son, Timothy. Second Timothy chapter one. Um, let's deal with the main theme, so you'll have an ideal of the running theme. Does anybody has anybody already started reading Second Timothy? Amen. Anybody started reading it already? Uh, do you have you figured a theme for the book book already? Anybody want to give a shot at what they think the theme is for the book? Anybody? Yes, sir. Junior Deacon, talk loud. That was the first book of Timothy. That's a good try, though. <laughs> he said, I'm going to go with what we did in First Timothy. Right. This is Second Timothy. Yeah, the, there's a focus and an emphasis uh, in each book. Yes, sir. I'm going to say power. Power. <clears throat> I wouldn't say that's the main thing. Yeah, right. You deal with that, yes. Yes, sir. Is it uh, finishing the work of Christ? Mm, no. It, that sounds good. And I've seen that as one of the clips, but I, I don't think that's the main theme of, of Second Timothy. It's part of the theme, but that's not. Yes, sir. Did your hand up, Mr. Clint? Clint? Responsibility. Responsibility. Um, no, that's not. I mean, it, it, everybody, I'm not saying anybody's wrong because all of it's part of it. So you're not wrong. But there's. You think I, I'm going to see if Mr. Virgie said you. Faith, it's, it's in there, but that's not the main thing. You want to try again, Elder? Yeah, I was going to say, um, basically continuing to build on the foundation that you had, that you was given. Uh, I wouldn't say that's the main thing. Okay. But good try, good try. All right, took the behind. Waiting on the Lord. It's in there, but that's not. Okay, write this down. So when I ask you next week, if the Lord will, you're going to remember. Amen. Write this down. The second theme, and there's there's several scriptures to give credence to this from what I saw. Because I did see where, you know, continuing in Christ and all that. That's good. Uh, but I saw something that, I, that really stood out to me in 2 Timothy. Uh, enduring afflictions for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Enduring afflictions for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I say that as the main emphasis because in each chapter, chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, and chapter 4, Paul talks about this in the letter that he writes, this epistle, enduring afflictions for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Enduring afflictions. And you're not just getting afflicted just because you did something wrong. You're doing this for the gospel uh, of Jesus Christ. So everything that you all said is enjoined in there. Does that make sense? Nobody's answer was necessarily wrong. But if I had to pull a main theme, that would be enduring afflictions for the gospel of Jesus Christ. All right, let's begin in verse 1. Everybody have a Bible. If you don't, please share your Bible with somebody. Let's read. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of man. Oh, thank you, the will of man. I, this, let me let me let me stop there. People got men consecrating them as apostles. That ain't biblical. I'm gonna say that one more time. It's not biblical. One more time again. It is not biblical. You cannot consecrate somebody as an apostle. They have to be called directly from God. They have to see Jesus some way. <laughs> okay. So, Pastor, what about the fivefold ministry? Says you have apostles, prophets. We've had them. They are our foundation. We never. You can never get rid of the apostles that were the foundation of the church. But these busters that are calling themselves apostles now are not apostles. 
Okay. Pastor, you don't believe in the apostles? No, not, not no more. We don't need a foundation laid no more. They were the foundation layers. They were, they were the genesis of the New Testament church. Now, is there an apostolic mantle upon people? Possibly. It, 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 but to say that people are consecrated, I can't consecrate you no. You didn't see Paul going talking about I'm going to consecrate you no apostles. They did elders. Yes, sir. Was that something new that just came out in the last 20 years or something? Like, where did all this come from? It, well, the closer we get to the Lord, the crazier folk get. <laughs> I mean, the best way to describe it. No, no, seriously. The closer we get to the Lord, because uh, we call calling ourselves archbishops now. That's what I, I was trying to come to. We call ourselves archbishops now. We, we, we love Catholicism. The, the, the modern day visible church loves Catholicism when we should despise it. Uh, Y'all see what I'm saying? Because the Catholic faith is an antichrist faith. It's against Christ. It's against his word. How, why do you say that? Because they believe in God. I say that because they believe in doing everything but going to Christ first. Any, any religion that points you to somebody other than Christ is antichrist. Does that make sense? If I go tell you to pray to Mary, that's antichrist. Because the Bible says you can't get to the Father. He didn't say to Mary. He said to the Son, Jesus Christ, which was the flesh, Emmanuel, God with us. He said if you come, watch this. If you try to come any other way, you're a thief and a robber. So we got all these titles. We done went crazy. I'm an apostle. I'm a prophet. I'm archbishop. I'm this. I'm the chief apostle. No, you're not. Amen. No, you're not. You're only the apostle. He said, Paul. Paul gives his credentials to his son. He said, I'm an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. That's why when you go over to Revelation, he said they're going to call themselves apostles. He said, but they're not. He said, they're liars. All this stuff was, all this stuff was prophesied in scripture, is written in scripture. They said, he said they're going to call themselves apostles. They're not. Women call themselves apostles. Lord help us, Jesus. <laughs> Verse 2. To Timothy, my dearly beloved son, Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Christ Jesus. On the See people right there with that. See, he's talking about God and the Father and Jesus. It's separate, but they don't they don't know that they're that, that, that Paul is just basically explaining that that they are one. He's not saying something separate. It's a separate entity. If he was wanting to deal with the Trinity right there, he would say from God the Father, the Holy Spirit, and Christ. Yeah. Or, I like that. He said, my dearly beloved son. Now, he wasn't his biological son. He was his son in the faith. He was his son in the gospel. Paul mentored him. Um, remember, Paul didn't meet Timothy uh, until we were we found in the book of Acts. Acts uh, probably Acts chapter 16 is when he first met with Timothy. So he wasn't his natural son. He was his son in the gospel, his son in the faith. He said, grace, mercy, and peace. From God the Father and our Christ Jesus our Lord. Now most of us know grace uh, is the favor of God. It's the benefit of God. Mercy is that thing that shields us from God's wrath. Then I dealt with peace. But I want to look closer at peace. We always talk about peace. And I wanted to really look at peace right there. Uh, and it comes from a Greek word. Irene. Irene. Everybody say Irene. So this word peace in the Greek means, watch this, prosperity. It means one, being one or whole, peace, quietness, rest. And then I like this, set at one again. Somebody say set at one again. It means that a person that has peace was confused, conflicted, and split, and torn. But now they're set at one again. They're made whole again. Peace is an inner calm and a spiritual well-being.
that only come from Jesus Christ. Don't you, aren't you grateful for the peace of God and the inner calm? When everything is chaotic, you have an inner peace, a spiritual well-being. So I like that he said, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Then he says, I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with a pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers, how often he's praying in a good leader, in a good uh, mentor, uh, whether it's a pastor, an apostle, they're going to pray for people that are under them night and day. Verse four, greatly he wants to see him. I'm writing to you, but I want to see you be mindful of thy tears that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance, I'm bringing back to my memory the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also, that that same faith, what is unfeigned faith? It is, it is undissembled faith. It is sincere faith. It, it, it's, it's without dissimulation or, or that word means hypocrisy. Uh, it's unfit. In other words, this faith is a symbol. This faith is together. This faith is not here. It's not up and down. Uh, your faith is uh, 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 without hypocrisy. Sincere. Somebody say sincere faith. Sincere. We all need unseen faith. We, somebody, I thank you, Miss Virgie. I said, we all need unfeigned faith. We need faith in this hour. He said, this same faith was in your grandmother, Lois, and in your mother, Eunice. So Timothy just didn't come from, from nothing. He had a foundation. Let me say this to those that are older. Your children and grandchildren ought to see your faith. Amen. Let me say it again. They ought to see when they're panicking, you shouldn't be panicking. Amen. When they're not believing, you should believe it. Amen. I mean, think about this. Paul said, I saw the faith, or either he saw it or heard of the faith of his grandmother, his mother, and I pray that that same faith is in you. Now, obviously, and we're going to see this in a minute, Paul is hearing something about Timothy that wasn't too good. Timothy was getting a little shaken. You'll see what I mean. It's, it's in this text. Timothy must have been getting a little shaken. Uh, so Paul is trying to steer him in the right direction. Let's read. You'll see. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hand. He's talking about when I consecrated you. When I laid hands on you. When I anointed you. Uh, that word stir up, it doesn't mean stir like this. It means to rekindle a fire. Somebody say rekindle a fire. So when Paul is saying to Tim, Timothy, stir up the gift that's in him, he's saying to rekindle the fire. So he must have heard that Timothy was, his faith was dwindling. He was in tears. Uh, he was being attacked. But Paul is reminding, put him in remembrance. Sometimes you got to put people in remembrance. When you see somebody's faith get challenged, you got to tell them to stir up again. Rekindle the fire. Amen. I, I see that in Judah life lately. I'm like, y'all, don't dark and stale and dry. I'm asking you all to rekindle the fire. Turn to somebody and say, rekindle the fire. Rekindle the fire. Tell them you feel a little dry, rekindle the fire. Get in your closet, get in your prayer closet, and praise God till you start till the Holy Ghost takes over and you start speaking in tongues, praying in the Holy. Come on, church, rekindle the fire. If you feel yourself getting dry and stale, you're not operating in the faith that God wants you to. You need to do something. You need to turn the wheel in the in the what's that that well so you can get that fire going. Rekindle the fire. Stir up the gift of God. It's in you, the gift of God. The gift of God. For God, no, verse 7, here it goes. For God has not given us. 
Wait a minute, let's stop there first. Something's going on with Timothy for Paul to say this right. God has not given us the spirit of what? And I said this a couple of weeks ago. Fear is a spirit. And it's not from God. So if it's not from God, where is it from? From the enemy. The enemy causes fear. Come on church, stay with me. The enemy causes you to worry. The enemy causes you to doubt. It's not from God. Come on. God hath not given us the spirit of period. Period. I was talking to one of my coworkers today. Um, and she was talking about, she lives in the apartment. She about, and she asked me, did you and your wife live in the house? Did you live in the house? She said, I can't live in no house by myself. I'm a woman, I can't do that. <laughs> That's the spirit of fear. Because mm -hmm. with God, you can live anywhere. Amen. 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 She thinks because she lives in the apartment, she's all right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if the enemy wants you, he come to the apartment. Right. Amen. She has more people around. And they killing people in front of people. They raping people in front of people. Come on, church. If you ain't protected, it don't matter whether you're in an apartment, in a home, in a car, on a plane. I ain't flying. I'm scared to fly. Why? You don't trust God enough to get in the plane and go somewhere? Man, oh, God's going to help somebody tonight. Why would you be afraid? I'm afraid. God has not given. Where did that spirit come from? Oh, y'all, y'all gonna get quiet on me tonight. Where would that spirit just come from? Fear. Because if it's your time, it don't matter if you're plane, train, bus, bike, walking, car, in a movie theater, in a shopping mall. They shooting everywhere. God has not given us that. That was, can, can I tell you something? This was my scripture during the pandemic. Y'all should remember that. This was my scripture. Y'all, I quoted. Y'all know I quoted in this church many a times during the pandemic. God has not given us the because they wanted us to be fearful. Amen. They wanted to be fearful. They wanted us to get to a place where I, I believe some people were sicker because they were just fearful. Fear, the Bible says, fear has torment. Torment will make, can you imagine being tormented? Yes. They want us to be, everything on the news was about fear. Come on, y'all, don't act like y'all forgot that quick. Everything was about fear. Even if you got notification on your phone. I remember I would travel, come back, or go to a city, rather, and, and hit the city, remember this dear, and I'll get a notification on my phone. We'll let you know if you're in a COVID area. I don't, I don't care. They wanted us, they, they, they had people so scared of COVID, COVID became their God. Y'all, am I telling the truth? They had people so scared of COVID, COVID, and everything they said, they believed it. Everything they said. Don't let your family come over because they may not be sick, but they're carrying it. Yeah. <laughs> I had a family member tell me that. You may not be sick, but you may be carrying it. The devil is a lie. The spirit of fear gripped us. People still, to this day, people are still scared. Y'all right. gonna right. talk to Pastor tonight. People, met, people are, when I tell you they, they spiritually messed up, they mentally messed up, and they're physically messed up because of the spirit of fear. Fear is worse than it. That was the real pandemic, fear. Am I telling the truth to the life? How many know people that you work with or family members still scared? Still walk around in masks, face diapers. <laughs> Still going to church, sitting up in mass. And don't know if you followed and, and at least did your research. 
you would know that the mask makes you sicker. Tears down your immune system. Got you breathing your own germ. God, God never intended for us not to breathe clean air. <laughs> Stay six feet away. Fear. But God didn't give us that spirit. I'm staying here for a minute because don't think they're done trying to put fear in us. God did not give us a spirit of fear because fear is not from God. But what did he give us, Pastor? If he didn't give us fear, what did he give us? He gave us a spirit of but the But of what? Power. Everybody say power. Of love. And of a your Think about it. Fear tears away all of those three things. Fear takes away power. Fear takes away love. Th think about that. People wouldn't even go see their relatives. And some people told their relatives after the poison had come out, they told them, if you ain't got that poison, you can't come to my house. <laughs> Took away the spirit of love. And took away a sound mind. People, might, they still crazy. People are still, y'all, y'all, okay, y'all got them in your family, I got them in my family. They still crazy. Still fearful. God didn't give us church power, think about that, love and a sound mind. He had to deal with Timothy. Something was called in Timothy possibly to be fearful. Verse 8, let's read. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony. Mm -hmm. There's the first word, affliction. Remember I said you're going to see a running theme enduring afflictions for the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want to read that verse in the Amplified. So do not be ashamed to testify about our Lord or about me, his prisoner. Paul was saying that because Paul was in prison. But with me, take your share of suffering for the gospel. Continue to preach Regardless of the circumstance, they told us to stop preaching or preach in your little home. Go home and go online and preach in accordance with the power of God, for his power is invincible. Invincible. Somebody say invincible. He says, listen to this. The afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Another way of saying this is your hardships and sufferings for the gospel of Jesus Christ according to the power. That word power is dunamis. Y'all heard that before. Dunamis. When you, that's what the Holy Ghost is. Dunamis power. The mighty, working, indestructible, invincible, eternal, efficacious power, strength of the eternal, almighty God. Why do we have to fear, y'all? When we talk about, I'm not talking about our power, I'm talking about his power. I'm going to say his mighty, working, indestructible, invincible, eternal, efficacious power, strength of the eternal, omnipotent God. Amen. What do we have to fear? We, we don't, let me say this. Some people say, well, I don't want to die. If it's your time, it's your time. Just make sure you're right. First of all, the church is not supposed to just love our lives to that point where we stop doing God's will because something is going on. We love not our life even unto death. That sounds rough, don't it? Because that's how, that's the mind, watch this church, that should be the mindset of the New Testament believer. Even if I die, at least I'm doing the will of the Lord. We stopped doing the will of the Lord for some little virus that they played like it was killing all the people, but they were doing the killing. The hospitals, were, yeah, I'm saying I'm live on social media. The hospitals were doing the killing using remdesivir, that drug they knew that was going to kill people and blame it on COVID. 
putting a respirator on them, ventilating people, collapsing their lungs. They were killing people. COVID wasn't killing people. But they made us take it so we can operate and live in fear. It's about everybody in this church got sick. Everybody's still alive. And I was pleading with y'all, don't go to the hospital. Because if you go, they gonna, if you ain't careful, I had a doctor tell, and I shared this before, I had a doctor, a woman, we were in a meeting in, in Florida with a woman and going over some stuff, you know, like time share stuff you did once you come to a meeting so you can get a free gift. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. If you know how to travel, you know how to travel. <laughs> you take an hour and a half of my time, but I know how to say no. <laughs> but the woman told me her doc, her husband was an MD, a medical doctor. She said he got sick. He was in the hospital. He said they wanted to put him on the ventilator. He said, honey, come get me. They ain't gonna put me on. Because he knew. If you had a heart attack, they labeled it COVID. If you had a stroke and died, they labeled it COVID. So everybody can think all these people died from COVID. Church, God didn't give us a spirit of fear. And we are supposed to stand bold in the testimony. That's what Paul's telling Timothy in this age. We're supposed to stand bold in the testimony. Y'all, we ain't supposed to worry about our lives like that. I told the Lord during that time. I said, Lord, well, I don't, you know, I, after the Lord spoke and left me to see that it was wasn't what they said it was anyway. He said, I said, Lord, if I die preaching, I'm gonna die preaching. I did. I was I was I was because why would I stop preaching and baptizing folk? I mean, think about it. people were pastors were so fearful that they told people to baptize themselves. Which ain't biblical because you can't baptize yourself. How bad it is, you can't, let me say it one more time, you can't baptize yourself. When it comes to baptism in water, somebody else has to baptize you that has the faith. When it comes to the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the only person that can baptize you is Jesus Christ. But you can never baptize yourself either way. I'm going to drop in the water. I told him to get in the shower and talk about it in Jesus' name. What kind of foolishness. Y'all laughing, but they were doing it. I'm telling you. Yes, sir, Junior Deacon. Uh, and it can't just be anybody baptized. It can't be anybody, right? You gotta have faith. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta be called to the service of the Lord, right? He said, "Don't be ashamed of the testimony of my Lord, nor me as prisoner. Don't be ashamed, Paul. Timothy." I know I'm in jail, but I'm in jail for the gospel's sake. I'm suffering afflictions for the gospel. Amen. You know, if you're going to suffer, make sure you suffer for doing right. Amen. If you're going to suffer, make sure you suffer for doing good and telling the truth. Amen. Don't suffer for lying. Amen. Don't suffer for sinning. Come on, church. Amen. If you're going to suffer, make sure you're suffering for righteousness' sake. He said, I, he said, don't be ashamed of the testimony of the Lord and don't be ashamed of me, his prisoner. He said, but you be a partaker of the affliction of the God. If you're going to walk with the Lord, you're going to be afflicted. Amen. I didn't get too many amens on that. Let me say that again. Let, 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 me, let, me, let me backtrack and give you the definition of afflictions. Since... That's the main theme of 2 Timothy, enduring afflictions for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, the word afflictions come from the original word, which means to suffer hardship in company with. I thought that was interesting. In company with. Be a partaker of afflictions. Then it comes derived from another word, to undergo hardship, to be afflicted, to endure afflictions or hardness, to suffer trouble. If you're going to walk with the Lord, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. You're going to, if you're going to walk with the Lord this hour, you're going to suffer. Amen. Let me say that again. And I know it ain't going to make you shout. What, what if we just really started really loving the word of God? If I said something like that, we'd say, praise the Lord. I'm going to suffer for Jesus' name. <laughs> we need to get excited. 
Think, keep, think about this though. Here's a scripture. If you suffer with Christ, you will reign with Christ. I don't, I, I don't see. Here's the thing. I've set, and God has put in me to set whatever fiction I got to do it now so I can reign with him later on. Amen. I want to reign with Jesus. Afflictions. He said, you're going to endure afflictions just like we did. Verse 9. Who have saved us and called us with a holy calling. Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Wow, Paul had a revelation. Before the world began, this thing was put in place. Verse 10, but now is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ. That's when he came, who had abolished death and had brought life and immortality to life through man, because Jesus came. Because Jesus came and because of what he suffered, he, oh, thank you, Jesus. He, uh, I like that word, he abolished death. <laughs> he abolished, that's why we don't have to be afraid, church. We don't have to be afraid of death. Now, ain't nobody sadistic talking about like, that. just get ready to die. I ain't talking like that. I'm just saying we can't fear death. And, I, and I've said it before. We, we scared of a little virus. These apostles live with the threat of death every day. Every day. Y'all, we read it in the book of Acts, didn't we? When you read through the book of Acts, they were told, they were, they were commanded, don't you preach in his name, don't you teach in his name. If you do, we're going to kill you. Guess what they kept doing? They kept preaching and teaching in his name. We stopped preaching because of COVID. He abolished death. I ain't got to worry about death. For me, Paul said, best again, he said, for me to live is, I'll see if somebody going to finish it for me, Christ, and for me to die. Are y'all awake? Is gain. Look at somebody and tell them, for me to live is Christ. For me to die is gain. That's some heavy words, but that's the book. For me to live, can, can y'all say that and mean it? For me to live is Christ. That, that's the hope of the believer. Amen. To be absent from the body is to be present. That's the believers. Amen. He abolished death and had brought life. Thank God he brought life. Amen. And immortality to life through the gospel. The gospel comes to present life. Immortality. If I follow and if I obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, I have everlasting life and immortality. I'm not going to ever die. Pastor, if you live long enough, this physical body, but I'm not going to ever die. I got a building that's bigger than this little fleshly house. Verse 11. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not whoo, for I know whom I have believed. You gotta know him. You gotta know, you got to know him, church, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against. I'm not ashamed, and I'm persuaded. Would y'all say that with me? I am not ashamed, and I am persuaded. Uh, say it one more time. I'm not ashamed, and I am persuaded. I'm not ashamed of Jesus, and I'm persuaded that he's going to keep whatever he told me. And that which I've committed. Are you committed? Watch this. Are you committed to the gospel of Jesus Christ? You don't have to be a pastor or a preacher to be committed to the gospel. And you, you, you don't have to be a preacher. None of us are supposed to be ashamed of him. Amen. And he said, that which I have committed unto him against 
I want you to know the language. That day. Y'all know what he's talking about when he said against that day. What what is he talking? Let's see. Let's see who's awake tonight. Yes. That day. That's it. The day of what? The day of the Lord. That's what he's talking about. He's going to he's able to keep that which I have committed. In other words, from here until that day, the Lord's going to keep me because I've committed to him. Can I tell you something? God's going to keep. As long as you commit it, God is overcommitted to you. God is committed to you. He's committed to see you through. He's committed to see you victorious. He's committed to see you be blessed. He's committed to see you prosper. Come on, church. Y'all ain't got, well, got happy about it. He's committed. So since he's committed, he wants you to be committed. Amen. Verse 13. Hold fast or keep and follow the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. Our faith, our love is in Christ Jesus. Hold fast. He says, he says, keep and follow the form of sound. What I've been teaching to you, Timothy, keep these words. Follow them. They're sound words. Sound doctrine, right? Verse 14. That good thing which was committed unto thee, keep by which dwells in us. You know what he's telling him to do right here? He said, guard it. Guard the word. Don't, don't, y'all hear me. Be careful of listening to all these false doctrines and craziness. I'm telling you, the closer we get to the Lord, you're going to see more and more craziness. I'm, I'm so I'm so tired of seeing false prophets tell people that the Lord told me that you give some money. Yeah. I'm, 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 what, what's that word? I, I feel nauseated. You know, if you, most of us in here have been nauseated, right? It's a terrible feeling, ain't it? Yeah. It's, 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 it's a feeling that's very uncomfortable. When you're nauseated, you can't, you don't want to do anything. And you get to the point, you can get so nauseated, you don't want, when you first get nauseated, you don't want to barf. I'm using that word, you know what I mean? But after a while, after you've been nauseated so long, you know, just barf and get it over with. Can I tell you something? God is nauseated with religion and deceit and deception. False prophet, buy this and the Lord going to bless you. No. Ain't nowhere in the scripture that foolishness. Amen. Come on, y'all. Y'all, this church ain't gonna be okie doke. I ain't bringing in no false prophets. Lift an offering for the church as we all do, because the church has finances, the church has a business aspect, it's proper. But the preacher them preacher, he said, The Lord told me if you want to be blessed, to give again. Right. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> the Lord told me to seal this word that I gave you tonight. This is the preacher talking after the end of service. Give a hundred dollars. Who said it? <laughs> that ain't, can I tell you, that ain't God, and they are not prophets. Yes, they are prophets. P R O F I T. It is for profit. Y'all didn't, do y'all see? Stop for a moment. Do y'all see that anywhere in scripture where the prophets did that? No. Well, why do we do it? And why do we accept it? Because we got a lot of false prophets and the Bible says there's going to be false prophets and false Christ and they will deceive many. People traveling around the country and other places just to see these false prophets. And half of them look like homosexuals. They so feminized. Hair looks like women's. No, I don't care. Get mad at me. Feminized clothes, tight britches. No, we are in. I can tell you, God is nauseated. Because I know the way God deals with me. And I believe any true man of God in this hour. Is going to feel God. I said, true man of God is going to feel God's nausea. Mm-hmm. 
He said, guard, verse 14, by the Holy Ghost, which dwelt. That word keep means to guard. Guard, guard, guard the word. Don't let nobody bring you no false mess. Don't let nobody tell you the prophet's over here. Even the scripture says they're going to say he's over here, he's over there. Don't go. Verse 15. This thou knowest that all which are in Asia be turned away from me of whom are the Gillis and her, her genes. Watch this, church. Watch this. This really blew me away when I read this, when I was studying this. He said, all which are in Asia be turned away. You know what that means? They deserted him. Paul is saying to Timothy, those that were in Asia deserted me. And then he names a couple of them. That, that, can I tell you something? That really encouraged me in one sense as a pastor. Because as much as I try to pour into people and love people and direct people to Jesus and live in right and holy, people have left this ministry. After I've poured into them, their families, I mean... I can't tell you the countless hours I went to high schools, traveled across, went to courtrooms with members. And when they decide to get mad and leave, it's like, see, you wouldn't want to be here. But scriptures like this encourage me because if they left Jesus and if they left Paul, who am I? Who do I think I am? <laughs> who am I? When people leave the ministry, Jesus had... 12 disciples and 70 other that followed him. And in one day, 70 disciples left him. Who am I when a member leaves to think, oh. <laughs> I mean, really, I, and I'm making this personal right now. Because the enemy is trying to make you think, they are people leaving and they left Jesus. Who do I think I am? They left the king of glory. I am nothing but a servant of his. Come on, church. Paul said, they deserted me. <laughs> uh, uh, and then he says, verse 16, the Lord, Lord give mercy unto the house of Onesiphorus. For he oft refreshed me. He took care of me. He, he took care of my needs and was not ashamed of my you know where he was visiting Paul at, right? When he said he's not ashamed of my chain. He was visiting Paul in prison. Verse 17. But when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently. Wow. Wow. The Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy of the Lord in it's interesting that Paul mentioned that day twice now are there two days no. is it a rapture and a second coming <laughs> no it's one day it's the day of the Lord ain't no two days rapture and then the second coming ain't, where did we get this foolish from except this guy named Darby from the 1800s that started this false doctrine and everybody took a hold of it that the rapture's coming before the tribulation, and we getting out of here, we going to heaven. The Bible never said that. The Bible said the heaven's coming, the city's coming. Search. But y'all get awfully quiet when I start talking like that. The Bible ain't never said, where, show me one time where it said we're going to heaven. It said heaven, he's going to have a new heaven, right? And the holy city's doing what? Now, we're going to be in heaven, but it's coming. Down. Yes, sir. So, I think what they mean by second coming, maybe because he came in the flesh the first time. No, yes. That was, they considered that the first coming. Then they said, there's a rapture. And then after the rapture is the second. Which is interesting. It's amazing that the scripture says that day. From the Old Testament to the New. That means he's coming. Today. He used it. Have fine mercy. So Paul's really just. Praying right there. To, as he's writing. He said I pray that the Lord grant. Since he was so dear to me. 
and he took care of my needs and he took he refreshed me he come to see me when i was in jail he said the lord grant unto him that he may find mercy of the lord in it, it almost speaks to was this guy saved And in how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus. You know, and then he tells Timothy, you know what I'm talking about. Because you, at that time, Timothy was probably with him at one time. When this, this brother came to minister to him. Church, that's the end of chapter 1. But I want us to remember that God, if you don't take anything away, God has not given us the spirit of fear. Amen. So if you if you harbor, if you house fear, God didn't give it to you. Amen. But of what? Power? Love. Of love. His peace. Remember we talked about peace being that watch this, y'all remember that. Remember we talked about the peace earlier. And what that means, that inner calm. Anybody thank God for an inner calm? Amen. Can you imagine that God gives us a peace that passeth all understanding? You can't figure out the peace that the people of God has. God has not given us, church, the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. When fear tries to rip you, just start quoting that. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of love. power, love, and a sound I mean, just start quoting. You know, the best thing you can do for yourself is quote the word of God. Amen. Let your own ears hear the word come out of your mouth. Amen. Isn't it good? The faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Well, you ain't around the preacher enough for me to be preaching to you. You got to preach to yourself. I deputize everybody in here to preach to themselves. Start prophesying to yourself. When the enemy tries to come in like a flood, say the Lord is lifting up a standard against him. When the enemy tries to make me think I'm sick, say I am healed with his stripes. Come on, church. Start declaring the word of God over your life. The enemy trying to put depression on you. You say the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. Let your ears hear the word. Because when you speak something out of your mouth that ain't the word, you're going to eat the fruit of it. Proverbs 16, 21. The power of life and death is in your tongue. I declare you start preaching the word to yourself. Boy, you you going you gonna to find yourself rising in the Lord. Amen. Trouble comes, quote the scriptures. Amen. Sickness comes, quote the scriptures. When you need provision, quote the scriptures. He Jehovah Jireh, my provider. The Lord is my shepherd. Amen. God has not given us the spirit of fear. Be prepared to endure some things. But while you're enduring, don't let fear inhabit your dwelling. Amen. 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 Any questions? I'm done. Come on, give the Lord a praise.